America stands at a crossroads. As the world's most oil-dependent nation, we face critical choices about our energy future. How do we fulfill our growing demand for energy and reduce global warming pollution? Nearly one-third of America's global warming emissions come from the production and consumption of fossil fuel for transportation. Now, the coal industry is aggressively pushing a plan to turn hundreds of millions of tons of coal into liquid transportation fuel. But how much will liquid coal reduce our dependence on foreign sources of oil, and at what price? What are we going to use? Coal, oil, what? We're all caught in this problem. We're all in it together. I know of not one soul who wants to live with this coal to oil in their backyard. We need to help try to keep climate change from being a huge problem, not only for us, but for other people in the world, because ultimately our security is closely tied to that of the rest of the world. There are so many demands on our tax dollars. We have growing deficits. We have growing debts. And to put good money after bad isn't the right direction. It's the wrong investment for the country. We need to think smarter about how we address the issue of alternative energy resources and find resources to make investments that work. And spending large amounts of money investing in bad technology is not only in irresponsible, but I think it's immoral. On September 5th, 2007, the liquid coal debate moved to Capitol Hill. As you can see from the containers in front of you, the fuels are clear. It looks clean anyway. I didn't open it up and smell <laughs> it, but that this fuel can be burned as clean or cleaner than what we're, what we're burning. This would move transportation fuels and coal from being a producer of greenhouse gases to being a net part of the solution. I've been listening to you for an, an hour now, and I, I still don't know what the facts are. There is no such thing as clean coal. The assertion of the coal industry that one gallon of liquid coal is the same amount of carbon in one gallon of conventional gasoline. This is actually an interesting way that they're playing with the facts. If you're just taking the final product and comparing the two, they do have the same amount of carbon dioxide in them. It's the processing, it's the creation of that liquid coal that actually is where most of the CO2 emissions occur. Liquid coal, because of its life cycle CO2 emissions, means that when I'm driving a Prius and I fill up with liquid coal, I'm producing as much CO2 as if I were driving a Hummer. The coal industry says that if we capture the carbon dioxide from a coal to liquids plant, that you can actually wind up with lower overall carbon dioxide pollution. This is basically a bait and switch argument by the coal industry. When it comes to policy, the coal industry opposes performance standards that would actually require them to meet those emission limits. The largest source of CO2 emissions in the world is the Sasol liquid coal plant in Segunda, South Africa. And it was mostly funded by the South African government and was built under the apartheid regime. And it's the size of a small town. The last thing we need in this country is a liquid coal plant like that. Unfortunately, there are those in this country that feel it's better to give $700 billion to unstable foreign governments than this to invest in our own country, our own workforce, our own national security, and our own national independence. We need to have an ability to generate that fuel in terms of national security. We would take a real and immediate step toward greater energy security. People who are worried about terrorism uh, definitely uh, and national security in a traditional sense, let's say, ought to definitely be worried about climate change. Uh, one of the first manifestations, for example, of climate change is going to be crop failures and flooding and heat waves and the rest in uh, tropical areas and increased uh, pressure for immigration into the northern hemisphere or more temperate areas. If we have a hard time in the United States today agreeing on a sensible immigration bill, uh, what is it going to be like if millions of our southern neighbors are hungry and thirsty and headed north? In terms of the consequences of global warming, uh, they are profound. They are larger than any uh, impacts that uh, human civilization has faced uh, in its, in its 20,000-year history. 
According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, we need to reduce our global warming emissions 80% by 2050. 80% is a lot. And we need to start moving in that direction as soon as possible in order to really avert the catastrophic impacts of climate change. And liquid coal moves us in absolutely the wrong direction. It's a new way to increase those emissions, not reduce by 80%. We can reduce the damage from coal, but it'll never be as clean as other available energy resources, especially energy efficiency and various types of renewable resources like wind and solar and biomass. If we want to use coal to back out our oil consumption, the better way to do it is to make electricity with a power plant that captures its carbon dioxide and then use that electricity to help power plug-in hybrid cars. If we do it that way, we can back out twice as many barrels of oil per ton of coal. The infrastructure cost for a plug-in hybrid is that every family who has one would absolutely have to have an extension cord, uh, and that's about it. Uh, if you park on the street, maybe two or three extension cords. But that places additional emphasis on using coal wisely, not using it for dumb schemes like liquid coal. In my view, there are lots of uncertainties with regard to the future of coal to liquids in the United States, and I just don't see the private sector coming up with a lot of its own funds to move this technology forward. The coal industry and the folks who want to construct the coal to liquids plants have asked for a number of different things. They've asked for $500 million per plant and outright grants to start their construction process. They've asked for the creation of a $100 billion loan guarantee program. They've asked for a production tax credit up to $200 million per plant. And they've asked that the Department of Defense be required to buy a certain amount of coal to liquids at a set price. It's just an enormous amount of money. The coal industry is after the taxpayer's wallet to subsidize this industry because Wall Street is smart enough to realize what a bad investment it is. They can't get the money from the private sector on Wall Street, so they're going to Congress, and they're basically trying to have Congress lay the bill and all of the economic risk onto the American consumer. You have senators and House members who are more interested in serving the coal and the oil and the gas interest than they are in the public interest, and I think it's time for a change. I've seen over time communities devastated by the actions of coal companies. The first coal to liquid plant could be in central Pennsylvania in Schuylkill County. They've been trying to get this plant built for the past seven years. I think the coal to oil plant would devastate this community. We are surrounded by eight coal generation plants, three prisons, two landfills, and occasionally they will use the waste from these coal-fired plants, which is red ash on our highways during the bad weather. We are an experiment. Cancer is the number one cause of death in Schuylkill County. And throughout the rest of the United States, it's, it's heart disease. And so we have this problem, and now Instead of trying to solve the problem or correct the situation, we're adding to it, we're making it worse. That's what's wrong. And now that they want to bring a coal to oil plant in, another tragedy that would use 7.5 million gallon of water a day. And once the aquifer is destroyed, then how do you fix that? Some of the congressmen come to this area and visit, take a look, and then leave. We have to stay here. We have to live with it. So if you, wanna, you want this project, you come here and live with it. And you will have a different attitude. You know, to replace just 10% of the oil that we use in this country with liquid coal, we'd have to increase coal mining by more than 40%. and we would exacerbate all the effects from coal mining. Mountaintop removal, strip mining impacts on local streams. We would be increasing all of these damages on our lands, and that's not really worth it for just 10% of our use of oil. Listen, there is no silver bullet to ending our dependence on oil. What we really need is a series of solutions. We need silver buckshot. 
the best thing we can do is start with the cleanest energy resources first, which is energy efficiency. And it's the energy resource that has no pollution associated with it, no mining damage associated with it, no water pollution associated with it, and lots of jobs associated with it. The second thing we should do is promote renewable electricity sources, wind, solar, biomass. Then we can make electricity cleanly from coal if we capture not only the conventional pollution, but also the carbon dioxide pollution. Then smart growth policies, the way our cities are built. If we do all those things, we can cut global warming pollution by the 80% levels that we need in order to protect the climate. I do not believe coal to liquid fuel is a good idea for the United States now. It's a bad investment for Americans. It's not where we need to be putting our money and it doesn't solve today's energy problems. The people or the coal to oil plant? Which is more important? I think it's time for us to address the issues of the environment and write the history of our generation, not only for ourselves, but for our children and grandchildren. Liquid coal is not the answer to America's energy problems. We have the solutions in hand to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, grow our economy, and fight global warming. But time is running out. What we need now is strong leadership to bring about a new energy future for America and the world. Thank you.